Sherlock Holmes solved an extraordinary case involving the theft of state secrets from a foreign embassy in London. Holmes' work virtually saved the throne of the Balkan monarch, King Conrad. In appreciation of this service, both Holmes and I were extended, and eagerly accepted, an invitation to join a royal hunting party at the Sovereign's Lodge, deep in the forest of his Balkan kingdom. fortune. Not mine. Let's hear Prince Stefan's. Afraid of your future, cousin? I'll tell you that when I've heard yours. <laughs> Don't worry, Conrad. I'm going to have a long, peaceful life. <laughs> tell them, girl. <laughs> Stefan, don't take it so seriously. Hmm? Oh, no, just a bit unnerving, that's all. Not some sort of joke of yours, was it? I'm afraid not. I imagine the girl is genuinely frightened, Prince Stefan. She's rushed out, leaving her money on the floor. Let's forget all this. Let's drink a toast to... I can't think of anything. We've drunk to our guests and to everybody's country. To beauty, Your Highness. You were as thoughtful as ever, Count Magor. Your second payment, Count Magor. Stefan! Remind you of the wonderful times at Monte Carlo? You can't tell what kind without a personal motive. Watson, do you think it could have been in his wine glass when we drank that last toast? Yes, could have been. Have to be very quick acting. Hmm. Yet it seems almost incredible that one could murder so quickly and so smoothly in front of so many witnesses. You know, Holmes, I've come to the conclusion that these people are raving mad. I haven't had a quiet minute since we first came here. The question, Watson, is who had the greatest motive? Even the king is capable of it, if the reason were great enough. Come in. Won't you sit here, sir? Please sit down, gentlemen. Great shock. Terrible. But I'm afraid the consequences will be still more tragic. War? Stefan came here at my request. As a representative of his father, King Johann. I had hoped to, to reach a non-aggression agreement to relieve the tension between our two countries. However, it seems that King Johann is more interested in finding an excuse for war than in preventing one. And now, of course, he has his excuse. Plus a genuine fury. King Johann is arriving tomorrow to take his son's body back home. I must be cleared of all suspicion before he leaves this lodge tomorrow. 
Mr. Holmes, will you help me? I can only promise to try, Your Majesty. But I believe I should warn you that the speed and cunning of our murderer may uh, place other lives in jeopardy before we see the end of this affair. Why was Prince Stefan's wine glass taken to the kitchen and washed? I set it aside, but the servants picked it up with the other glasses. An analysis will serve no purpose now, Your Majesty. Have you any more questions to ask Count Magor, Mr. Holmes? No, Your Majesty, none at present. You may go, Count Magor. Magor is an excellent equerry, Mr. Holmes. He's rash, but faithful. I see. Uh, tell me, Your Majesty, what do you know of Princess Antonia? She was a friend of Stefan. Mm -hmm. And her background? She's a member of an impoverished royal house. Have you known her long? A few years. We met at Monte Carlo. In fact, I fell in love with her there. No surprise. Everyone did, including Stefan. She was attached to, to another man, whom I respected and I was discreet. Stefan used no such discretion and swept her away from us all. You weren't angry, sir? No, not really. Stefan and I never really fought about anything except politics. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lie. Or can't you remember as far back as this morning? What do you mean, Antonia? Perhaps I was mistaken. You've made an accusation. I apologize. If you should require me again, Mr. Holmes, I'll be in my rooms. Very well, Your Majesty. I'm leaving too, Your Majesty. I wouldn't want you to think I spoke behind your back. Good night, gentlemen. Perhaps you should go and have your palms read tonight. There's a gypsy who tells amazing things. I say, Holmes, what's she getting at? Well, you know, Watson, it might be interesting to find out. Yes, it might be very interesting. Hmm. in his hand. Did you see anything that wasn't written in the hand? I... I see the two men quarrel. The king and the prince. I was waiting in the kitchen for the time when I would be told to dance. But as I go to a door, I see the two men preparing to fend. <laughs> Magor. Ten gold florins on Prince Stefan. Taken, Princess, and as good as one. Quick with your parrot, Stefan. Touche! Your wrist, Stefan. Miss Crutch? You'd better have it dressed. Count Magor? Your Majesty? Fetch your napkin from the table. <laughs> <laughs> you need fencing lessons, Stefan. <laughs> Your reflexes have slowed down. <laughs> I may need fencing lessons, but at least I need no lessons in sportsmanship. What do you mean? I was off guard. A true sportsman doesn't repose when his adversary is off balance. I won't forget that remark, Stefan. 
And I'll see that you remember it too. Gentlemen, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson will be back from their walk any moment. Then I do not look anymore. Thank you. You've been very helpful. I think that friendly match this morning warrants some close investigation. Come, Watson. Tell me, Your Majesty, who suggested the fencing match between yourself and Prince Stefan? Princess Antonia. Hmm? And uh, where are the epes? There. Would you mind if I had a look at them? No. Thank you. Your Majesty used? Yes. Did you have the choice of weapons? Yes. I note that the tip of this epee has been dipped in poison. You perhaps misunderstood me earlier, Mr. Holmes. My request and your orders are to clear me, not convict me. Evidence. The king had the choice of epes, so he was sure to be the one who gave her the poison. It's evidence, Watson, but fortunately for our own safety, it isn't conclusive. Oh, what do you mean? Well, we must continue our investigations until we have a decision, one way or the other. Then we must let the facts speak for themselves. Yes, but if you prove him guilty, he'll start a war. My dear Watson, I can only disclose the facts. I can't alter them. Oh, well, let's go to breakfast. Even if we are condemned men, we might as well have a hearty meal. Right to our ones. Yes, that's true. Go back. Go back. Do you remember what you called me in Monte Carlo? A vagabond princess. <laughs> An ambitious royal tramp. You wanted just one thing for yourself. A throne. I still want one. Conrad, I saw you with the Epes yesterday morning, before you fenced with Stefan. Oh, the hilt of one of them was loose, and I... <laughs> I haven't told Mr. Holmes yet, and I won't. If... If what? Your throne's an attractive throne, and I've been told I'm not a, an unattractive woman. You could have had it without blackmailing me. I was ready to marry you at Monte Carlo when you chose Stefan. I've loved you ever since. You... you love... Tell Mr. Holmes anything you want. Conrad, I didn't know... Get out! Get out! Mr. Holmes. Princess? It poses a dilemma for you, doesn't it? You Englishmen are so honorable. Are you willing to sacrifice your honor for him? Yes, Your Majesty. I did not kill Prince Stefan. And yet the circumstantial evidence could convict you in a court of law, you know. Mr. Holmes, you're a very dangerous man. Have I your word that when King Johann arrives, you will suppress any evidence you may have against me? No, Your Majesty. You're placing yourself and Dr. Watson in jeopardy. I realized that before I started my investigations. Count McGaw. Your Majesty? See that Princess Antonia is confined to her room. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson are under arrest. But look here, Your Majesty, we're British subjects. At the moment, that is not too important. Interesting situation, eh, Watson? Right, fantastic. 
Why, blasted Holmes, they can't throw us into prison like this without a charge or a reason? I'd wager they could. Well, they have. That's what I mean. Why else should he ask you to investigate the case for him, Holmes? You couldn't help but find him guilty. We haven't found him guilty, Watson. It's only circumstantial evidence. Yes, but you yourself said that was enough to convict him. Yes, but we've missed the most significant point. The motive. Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps it just isn't obvious. Who gains the most by Stefan's death? Um, uh, well, no one. Exactly. And who loses by it? Well, now, let me see. Uh, Princess Antonia loses a throne. And King Conrad throws his whole nation into a war for which he is totally unprepared. Now, that brings us to Count Magor. Magor? Well, he loses nothing. Mm -hmm. It would appear so, wouldn't it, Watson? What have you got on your mind, Holmes? Watch for the guard, Watson, and tell me when he comes this way. Right. Watson, do you remember what Stefan said just before he collapsed? No, I don't remember, except that he... Well, he was rather overshadowed by the dead. But he threw the gypsy's money to my gore and then said something about a second payment. Guard. What's that in your nose, Watson? Eh? Ah. Very neat, eh? Oh, look, and another one behind your ear. That's two. Mm, really, Holmes, this is no time for palm tricks. Hmm. I think you're quite right, old man. Hey. Come, come. <laughs> like the trick? Nose? Uh-huh. Yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. See? There's a coin. You take, hand. Huh? Good. Mm hmm Now, huh? Here? 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 Uh -huh. now. Hey. Body, sire, about a mile away. What can I tell him, Magor? Tell him nothing, Your Majesty. He has no proof against you. Oh, he'd start a war merely on suspicion. I need proof of my innocence. Count Magor? Yes. But, Holmes, he's not involved in all this. He could have put the poison on the epi. No. After all, how would he know which epi the king would choose? Sheer logic eliminates the count. Hmm. Not if the epi was poisoned after the duel, Watson. You mean to throw suspicion on the king? The wine glass, perhaps? Hmm. I think not, Watson. Princess! When Prince Stefan received the scratch, 
Who dressed the wound? My girl. We must go down to the hall immediately, and we have little time, Your Highness. But, Holmes, you can't prove anything. All the dressings have been burnt. You have the scrap of evidence. Well, evidence is an interesting thing, Watson. Sometimes it can be recreated. Uh, shall we go, Your Highness? Yes. Thank you. Follow me. Johann has issued secret orders for mobilization to take effect from the moment he recrosses the frontier. He's determined to have war and he can't be dissuaded. Are you quite sure of that, Count Magor? If King Johann has been confronted with the truth, there would have been no cause for war, would there, Count? Why draw your sword, Count Magor? We are unarmed. Put up your sword, Count Magor. What truth, Mr. Holmes? They're wasting time, Your Majesty. So they'll be free when King Yuan arrives. Not at all, Count. We happen to have discovered the last scrap of evidence that we needed. It completely vindicates Your Majesty. What is it? Will it convince King Johan? I believe it will. We have found the container that held the poison. What are you talking about, Holmes? We've found it, Watson. Haven't we, Count? Defend yourself, Mr. Holmes. Return the button or defend yourself. Put up your sword, Count McGaw. I'll count to three, Mr. Holmes. What is in this button, Count? Nothing. Oh, nothing, eh? Then you shouldn't mind very much if I do this with it. On guard, Count. No, what's the matter? I'm defending myself? I say there was poison in that button. You say there wasn't. If you're right, you shouldn't mind a little dueling scratch. No, don't, don't. Drop your sword. Well, Count? Yes, you're right. What happened in Monte Carlo? Monte Carlo? Yes, Your Majesty, that was where Stefan got some sort of hold on him. What was it, Count? I cheated at cards. He caught me. He took my iron urn, the woman I loved. I wanted to forget and start again, but he would never let me. He reminded me of it every chance he had. And what made it more unbearable, Count, was that you continually reminded yourself. And yet you couldn't quite escape your conscience, could you? King Johan and his party are entering the ground, sire. Quite frankly, Holmes, I should be glad to get back to London again and work with Lestrade. Poison swords and all that caper, I'm just not up to it. I know just what you mean, old chap. Oh, um, Holmes, I, uh, didn't care to mention this before, but did you know that Count Magor was noted for his swordsmanship? Oh, yes, yes, I seem to have heard about it somewhere. Oh. Well, well, uh, no, no offence, of course, but I mean, I, I've fenced with you, you know, and I mean, oh, you're, you're good enough, but, uh, well, you're not that good. I mean, to stand up to him like that. Oh, well, yes, I knew that, Watson, but uh, fortunately, he didn't. No, but I mean, what would have happened if he'd called your bluff? How long do you think he would have lasted with him? Well, let's see now, about uh, 30 or 40 seconds. But then, in every game of bluff, of course, there's a certain element of risk, or it really isn't much fun, is it? Yes. I shall be glad to see dear old Lestrade again. Well, don't ever tell him, Watson, but so will I. So will I. <laughs> <laughs>